In this video, we're going to learn how to compute limits of a function given a graph of that function. Very often in this type of problem, you'll see a graph like this, where you've got some filled in dots and some open dots. So let's try to understand what those mean. In this problem, we're asked to find g of negative 2. In a normal looking graph, what we would do is we would find negative 2 on our x-axis, and then go up or down on our function and find where the y value is. But it looks like we've got two y values. We've got that open circle and we've got that filled in circle. So what the filled in circle means is that that is where the actual y value is. We ignore the open circle and we find the filled in circle. So in this case, g of negative 2 equals 5. Now let's try to understand what limits mean. So in this case, we're trying to find the limit as x goes to negative 2 from above of g of x. So notice how I read that. So the lim stands for limit x arrow negative 2 plus. What that means is that x is getting closer to negative 2 from above negative 2. So the question that's really being asked here is what happens to g of x as x gets closer to negative 2 from above? So we're going to be thinking about x values that are close to negative 2 but larger than negative 2. So if you can imagine on the x-axis what we're doing is we're approaching negative 2 from the right. And sometimes that's how we'll actually read this limit as well. We'll say find the limit as x goes to negative 2 from the right of g of x. So we're ignoring x values that are less than negative 2 and only looking at x values that are bigger than negative 2. And we're asking ourselves, what happens to those y values? Well, the y values that correspond to those x values are these y values right here. And as we can see, as x gets closer to negative 2, my y values are getting closer to positive 3. So even though there's an open circle there, the y values are getting closer to positive 3, so that means that this limit is equal to positive 3. Now let's look at a different question. Now we're asked the limit as x goes to negative 2 from below of g of x. So notice that we have a little minus sign after the negative 2, and that means that we're looking at x values that are less than negative 2. So once again, the question is, what happens to g of x as x gets closer to negative 2, but this time we're looking at from below? So once again, we're thinking about x values that are getting closer to negative 2, but this time we're coming from the left. And again, sometimes we'll say that in the limit. We'll say, find the limit as x goes to negative 2 from the left of g of x. And once again, we're thinking about the corresponding y values. So for those x values, the corresponding y values are up here. And as we can see, those y values are getting closer to positive 5, and that means that this limit is positive 5. So for the limits here, it doesn't matter which circle is filled in and which circle is open. It matters which direction you're coming from. Okay, one more problem. Now we just want the limit as x goes to negative 2 of g of x. So notice that there isn't any little positive or negative sign after the negative 2. It's just x arrow negative 2. So the question that's being asked here is what happens to g of x as x gets closer to negative 2 with no stipulations about whether we're above or below. So that means that we want to think about x values that are getting closer to negative 2 from both sides, from below and above. So that means we're thinking about what happens to these y values from above and what happens to these y values from below. But what we see is that those y values go to different places. The y values from below go to 5 and the y values from above go to 3. So that means that there isn't one single y value that these y values are getting closer and closer to. So in this situation, we would say that this limit does not exist. It doesn't equal anything. The limit simply doesn't exist. There isn't one answer to this question. 